Oh, top tiers again. That'll do. We made a ball this time. Yeah, made a ball. Didn't hit them amazingly well. But the split's good. Yep. But well, that's, that's my first thought. What's your th first thought? Yeah, no, the first thought is, it's, you know, it's great. And it's sometimes it's strange that you can hit the balls absolutely fantastically well. And obviously you don't make one. That time I did fractionally get slightly high on the white. Um, but, but fortunately, one of the balls stopped the cue ball. So, so what we've got here, Simon, we've got two options here, depending on how you feel again. So the eight ball here for me, the winning shot in this frame here is this ball here. Now, yep. I, think, I think the majority of the pool fraternity here, with respect, would be playing this ball first. Yeah, it, so my first thought, my first thought was it came out, is you're gonna go red. So you got no real choice on that. Yeah. Red to the set. And I mm. was like, right, how do I get into red? So I'm just seeing that. That's like a beacon to yeah. me. That's, that's the ball I'm gonna pop. Yeah, and I think, I think most players would. But the cue ball on that is not great. Well, okay. If I'm playing this one, I want to be pretty much assured that I can get the gap through the yellow and the red and yeah. back through the gap again. Yeah. So everything for too far, nothing for short. As long as I hit the cushion and I get some, you know, get the cue ball moving, any kind of flick, I'm probably going to be okay. Yeah. But as people know, I've got a bit OCD with the game, and because I'm not quite hundred percent sure what's happening with it, I would be thinking, do I really want to play it? So you said so, a second ago, this is this in your mind is the eight ball. If you hit get this shot, you're also going to make taking up there. I, I I I like the idea here that if you play that ball first, yeah, and cannon that yellow, you're out can't possibly miss these reds. Okay. If you play this ball here, we don't 100% know what's happening. So, so, that's um, it. so let's go with, go with it. So basically, it, it, it's quite nice because it puts clarity in your mind because this isn't a guarantee. Yeah. No, I mean, obviously, you play as far as level. I'm concerned, I'm playing the one next to the eight yeah. ball and I'm cannon in this yellow. Okay. That's, and then, and then, and then that's you make, me. And then you make your, your clearance yeah, from there. Yeah, that's where I'm at as a player. Okay, let's see it. So you didn't quite get the full ball cannon, didn't can, quite you get made it. sure of the pot, and now you can plot your route. Yeah, well in fairness, you know, the, I, when I actually got down to play the shot, I didn't actually realise yeah. how awkward it was to yeah. cue it. But again, I wanted to back myself, I didn't really want to kind of not play the correct shot. Yeah. It has changed things a little bit, because as I alluded to, if you hit the yellow ball full in the face, you're out. Yeah, you, you, you're done. The yellow goes to there, keeps yes. stays there, and then you're on that one, that one, that one, everything goes. Whereas now that feels like a bit awkward. That feels a bit awkward. C correct. So, yeah. so, so effectively, what happened was just, just, just briefly was because my hand was a little bit awkward. I couldn't quite get comfortable. I got the pot a fractionally thick as well, which meant I come inside the yellow and bumped it. If I'd have potted the red ball uh, in the centre of the pocket, I would have hit the yellow ball full yeah. on, and not that way. So, with that said, again, we've got the situation here. This ball, where, where does this ball sort of fit in? Well, I'm on it now. I can get this side of the ball, but that's not great because the eight ball doesn't go in the center. Yeah. If the eight ball went into the center, I'd probably leave that last, fine. However, you would think the eight ball's either gonna go in here or here, likely here. So with that in mind, th this has likely gotta go. Yeah, and so as you're on it now. It's probably gotta go now. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna have a little assess of the situation, but I'm kinda funny on it because I'm trying to beat the yellow ball with the top spin and come back across. Because if I land on this ball, I'm out again. Yeah. This is the, this isn't the, this is the key ball. Yeah. Because but you the, can't take it now because of the angle it gives you? Because I could, I could risk playing that, but realistically, who wants to play that in a match? I mean, I'll be honest with you, I probably feel like I could weave that through that gap and get back into play. But from a coaching perspective and from a, from, a, from a correctness, that becomes down to a level of ability and not the correct shot for the majority. Because the margin's so small. Yes, that shot. so you're supposed to really try to coach from a, from a principle of the majority percentage yeah. factor, not the ability of the player. That's a completely different coaching uh, assessment. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I'm, you know, if Chris Mellon was here, I'm happy to tell him to play that shot because he'd get there. Yeah. But if I'm a, a, random, a random Joe, I can't really yeah. be t playing that shot. So this is the ball, and I want to come into here. Because again, if I come into here, I'm as good as out. Now, if I can top spin the ball and miss this ball to here, that is a nicer shot than stunning the ball to there. Because that is a natural angle. 
which means you kind of got to get there. That's just a speed control because yeah. the angle's taken care of. If you got to stun the ball back, this is now what I call an execution shot. Yeah. So stunning a ball is an execution shot. A natural angle shot is a knowledge cue ball shot. The knowledge that you understand where the balls go when you hit them without instructing them. Yeah. That might seem a little bit kind of deep, but it's not as deep as we'll, yeah. we can but certainly talk about that a bit more later. decisions, isn't it? Yes. So, so do you have the angle you need or are you... I, I wouldn't risk it. No. I, I think I can just you, about get past the yellow. But you, but you don't want to risk hitting that yellow. No. So you're now having to play the execution shot. I'm going to have to play the execution shot. Okay. Okay. So just jack up just a touch and just try and pop it back. And now you're happy. You're on that ball. I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. But again, you know, that is a kind of, you know, it's a finicky little shot. You can overrun it. You can decelerate and not get on it. You know, yeah. I hit it quite well. It, it looks on camera like it was it, something and nothing. But it, it looks was, a simple shot, but, it, but it's not. It's not. It's yeah, not. I'm with you. So, so you now, you now you're on your harder ball. Yeah. So now I'm on the harder ball. I would love the cue ball to have been there. Yeah. Because I wouldn't be hampered with this ball. Not that it's a big issue, but I would be able to control it better. Also, if I was there, I could argue I could maybe have come that way because I would, I would have less angle with the cue ball being there. Yeah. So just that turn of a ball yeah. changes things. But in all truth, I actually played for there because my intention was to come through this gap. Having seen it again, an extra turn, I may have, it, I may have gone that, that extra way. turn risks going too far as well. So uh, exactly. So you, and you, beggars can't be choosers. You just want yeah. to play the shot. Yeah. Okay, so we've got put the ball here, come back across, or we've got the ball here and come back into here. Not something that I would be a lover of, because as long as I get on this ball, as far as I'm concerned, I'm out. Yeah. I can edge my bets a little bit by playing this gap, which gives me the one at the top as well, if I don't like how I land on this. Yeah. So I'm going to play on two balls here. Yeah. Okay, so it's a natural angle, thankfully. I can just pot it, just middle ball, and just come across. Very now, nice. Okay. And you've landed so, on both, or you're on... Yeah, yeah. That, might not be on that one. Yeah, pretty good though. On this one you have. Yeah, pretty good. If I was there, yeah. you know, I could have played that, but yeah. it doesn't change. This anything. is the one you'd rather have been on, though. That's the one I'd rather be. I mean, yeah. if if the eight ball went into the centre, it was your I don't mind being yeah. on this one because I can play these three, drop here and drop there. Yeah. So, you know, in this instance here, because of the the red ball sitting slightly this side of the pocket, it means I'm here. Yeah which doesn't change a lot, you know, I'm not saying that it does, but they're, they're, you know, I wouldn't have minded being on that one either. So the key here is, again, two shots I can play. I can either stun the ball or I can run off the cushion. Yeah. Okay, so I would always play that because that is a knowledge cue ball shot yeah. and not an execution shot. Meaning if I've got to stun or screw the ball, I've got to instruct the cue ball to stop or come back. Playing that shot, I just let the ball naturally just roll yeah. off the rail. Do, do, its, do its natural thing. Nothing to play. Yeah. Okay, so three balls here. We've got a couple, of, a couple of options. In an ideal world, if I could pick the balls up with my hand, that would be my last ball. Yeah. It sits perfectly on the line. I'm close to my work. Everybody likes an easy eight ball. So that would be the plan. So in this instance here, I'm probably going to play this one first, drop the cue ball back, and then play the ball on the natural. Yeah. You could play that one and come up. That's absolutely fine. If I play that one, I come across a bit further, I just draw it back. So I'm gonna play the straight one. No reason not to. Okay, so got hold of it nicely. If I'd have been here, I would have played that. No big drama. Here, I can just draw it back. So now when I'm playing this shot, I'm looking to myself and saying, what is the area on the rail that I want? If I'm there, I'm absolutely fine. If I'm there, I'm absolutely fine. So that's you. So ra yeah, rather than the mental idea of I want to be straight, yeah. have a look at where you can't be. So as long as I'm not here, it doesn't matter where I am. So now I've took all the pressure got, out of the shot. So you've basically anywhere in that. I've took all the pressure, yeah. I've took all the pressure out of the shot time because I can land in that. Well, how am I not going to land in that? Yeah. As opposed to saying, I want to be straight. Doesn't matter if I'm straight. I just can't be outside of that box. Yeah. So once you can be inside of this box, it's a massive target area. 
So dab the cue ball back into the box. Perfect. And you're absolutely fine. So we're exactly where we want it to be. We're going to be a nice easy eight ball, nice and dead straight, which is what we want. So we just let the cue ball stop on its own accord. And with a bit of luck, put the eight ball. The thing I find fascinating about this clearance here is we talk, talk a lot about the patterns, working back from the eight ball, all that sort of thing, but you, 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 you were only focused to start with. You knew these three here were able to take care of themselves. They were clean, they're in the open. So you focused on those tricky balls to start yeah. with, and it was only turn your attention on these once you'd dealt with those. Well, if you consider the eight ball sat here, yeah. I want to leave at least one red ball high of the eight ball. Yeah. Because this that's is his the, obvious pocket. Because that's his obvious pocket. Yeah. I don't want to leave anything where I've got to kind of really be low yeah. to then come high unless I have to. Yeah. So I'm always looking to leave a ball sitting higher. Yeah. And obviously a, a, a connector coming to it. Now, as I said, the only real debate in that in that in that clearance is, of course, that you know I wouldn't forgive somebody for playing the ball in the middle pocket first shot because yeah. again that's a level of ability, and it's no good trying to play beyond. You know, for us as an example, I don't I don't think he'd mind me saying something like Carl Morris. Right. Carl Morris plays very 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 much to his own strengths. Yeah, he, he's a great player because he understands his strengths. And that's a great attribute to have. However, you could have a player who is trying to play shots and trying to execute shots that they haven't got the ability to do. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So again, from a coaching perspective, you're not trying to play like someone else. You're trying to play like a better version of you. And that is so important because everybody's got different levels of ability and different skill sets. Yeah. And some people think the game better some people are technically better and therefore you have to devise this formula that gets the maximum from you find find your strength, find your roots absolutely yeah. carl morris is fantastic at it keith brewer's fantastic at it um you know one or two others and then you've got your explosive players the likes of your tom cousins and the likes of your your chris mellins who kind of don't fear anything effectively and play like that. Yeah. And then you'd have the more kind of what I would saw sort of classic way of playing, which maybe which maybe would sort of drop towards myself and, and, and Gareth uh, effectively. Um, you know. And, 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 Fascinating stuff. It yeah. really is. I, I want to see some more though. So let's, okay. let's rack them up again.